so welcome to another Wargame review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at Commands and Colors Napoleonics. Commands and Colors, very famous wargame system. Uh, there's a ton of iterations. This is Napoleonics. There's an Ancients version that GMT puts mm -hmm. out. Which we have. Yes. There's World War II Memoir 44 from yep. Days of Wonder. Is there an American Revolutionary War one? Mm-hmm. From Compass Games? I want to say it's from Worthington Games. Worthington. Maybe it's Compass Games. Tri Tricorn and... Tricolors and... Colors Tricolors. or something, yeah. And then there's, there's The Great War, which is yeah, World War yeah. One from, from PSC. Yes, I mean, there's... Yeah, this lots is of iterations. A famous system. Well, it's very simple, yeah. very clean... There's a fantasy version, Battle Lore, anyway. Yeah, Battle Lore we've played. I played that with Tim. That yes. was an interesting game. So, you've probably heard of a game in this system, at least. Uh, if you've never played any of these games, it's a two-player, um, kind of tactical war game. This is a Napoleonics version. And it, a lot of it is you kind of pick the game that you want the theme of. At the moment, I'm on a bit of a Napoleonics binge. Well, and, and we really have in the, haven't in the past played a lot of Napoleonics. No. 100 Days 20 and maybe one or two others, and that's about it. Yes. And it's a fascinating piece of history for me, and I'm, I'm slowly learning more and more. Mm -hmm. And so a game with a really accessible system that has a lot of history in it is a mm -hmm. really good way to, to, to get at that kind of history. Yeah. Um, you can kind of see a bit of the board, and I'll show you more later. It's a game of... You're lining up your units like battle lines and kind of trying to keep a decent formation and then employing kind of some overall tactics where, you know, keeping your line troops together, using your um, artillery to combine. To, cavalry to Cavalry to take flanks, and things like that. Clean up stragglers. So you get a right. lot of learning of those um, old battle tactics. But the scenario book has like... I think this base game has like 15 scenarios in it. Yep, 15 Napoleonic battles. And it says. gives you like a few paragraphs of the history, the outcome, mm -hmm. who was actually there, the setup, why that was important. So you learn a lot just from like reading and setting up a game, and then you get to play it out. Yeah. And the game itself plays very quickly. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a card-driven game in the sense that you have a hand of cards, and you pick one to play, and the card says... You can do this, or you can do that, or do all of these different things. Or when you do this, you add a die, or, yes. or what have you. And so you are limited by mm -hmm. what you have in your hand. And that represents kind of the chaos of war and the fog of war. Because there might be times where you think, I desperately need to do this mm -hmm. thing. And if you and don't you have can't. a card that lets you do it, yeah. you are... Um, it's. It can be a bad time. It can escalate pretty quickly. Well, and, and, and one of the beauties of this system thematically and historically is that really replicate replicates battlefield command and control it you couldn't yell hey attack on the right flank you know the den of battle smoke you just couldn't communicate across a hundred yard battlefield or a 200 yard battlefield yes so those cards replicate that your commanders are hesitant they don't get a card or an order a direct order they they don't move so that can be frustrating too though Yes. You know, we played this one, and I think I drew one card that could activate my units on the left flank. You think that was a big reason for the victory. I, I don't know that I am sure about that, only because I was able to focus on your right flank and kind of roll it up, because those are the cards I drew. I, I drew. Right. But what I mean by that is it would have been a easier victory, I think, for you hmm. had you been able to put a bit more pressure on this side as well. I probably would have folded a lot quicker. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I had to overcome these really bad terrain mm -hmm. disadvantages. And that's just, that's not nearly there as was, much it, there. So if I had draw, drawn four or five cards for that left flank, I think it would have been uh, easier. Yeah, totally. It would have been a simpler, easier, quicker battle. We read, though, historically, this is what happened. Yeah, fascinating. Ironically. How the card play actually came to... Fruition yeah. with what happened historically. They, they took the, the higher, more difficult ground. They took this windmill that was really devastating. When I fired in there, it had a negative three dice modifier. So I got lucky. I charged in there and did some bayonet attacks. But very, very interesting that it 
it turned out this way. So, but yeah, this it's a very simple system. Mm -hmm. You're trying to make the best of your hand and then put that onto the battlefield. You can see here you got these blocks which have these cool units printed on them with stickers. You literally move from hex to hex, you know, shoot in ranged combat, yep. fix bayonets and charge, roll in the cavalry, and it really, most of the scenarios is kill X a number of enemy units, right. or capture this An objective, particular point, yeah. that gives you a, a, a victory point. It's kind of the first one to six flags, which is killing four or five units and getting yeah. a unit or two off the board. That's six flags. Yeah, you're not, you'll never like wipe a whole army. No. It just, that's not how it was back in the day. Yeah. You know, that's not how it is today even. At, at this point, the battle would have been over. And I'm just retreating. The French would have most likely stopped, you know, stopped the attack and the British would have retreated. Yes. Yeah, do X amount of losses that, yeah. and then I'm going to retreat. But that's that's what you get in this system. It's very quick yep. to learn. It's easy to play, and this is fairly teachable to almost anyone. Yeah, well. I would agree. And, and the cards are actually very cool. There's a lot of them that do special things. Yes. Um, you know, from adding dice in combat or allowing you to break the rules. W one of those cards that I used to great effect was, I think, Alon, where I was able to move four different units, their max movement, and still attack. Yes. So I was able to move all my infantry up, which would have taken at least two rounds, and kind of bayonet charge, and that kind of put a... So those cards are really cool. I, I like them a lot. Well, and the nice thing with the cards is, is that they also explain very well what they do. Yeah, yeah. Well, we played some Clear, games where the yeah. cards are like, clearly the written. card reference to see what that does? Yeah. It's got all the text right there. You do exactly what it well, says. Well, and, and they even use pictures. Mm -hmm. so, so once you show the board, and, and we've you know they've got the battlefield divided into three sections: right flank, left flank, and and the center. So you you use those cards, and it tells you move three units on the right flank. So it's very clear. I think it's very understandable. The real challenge of the game is managing your hand and doing the appropriate movements with the cards that you draw. Yes. You don't want to be stupid like me and run my first four units straight into the teeth of cannons. <laughs> into the into the kill zone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I understood what you were saying there. Cavalry are devastating. It was awesome to see my cavalry come around that, that right flank and make you ready to cripple a battle line. Yeah, they, they really can. And it's also interesting as you look at the board, there are some stragglers, right? I've got a couple of cavalry units here. And, and a couple of infantry, you killed everybody in those formations with the exception of those guys. So I started retreating those guys back because if you just killed that one last guy, you get a flag. So it's it's also a combination. When those units get weak, you got to kind of move them back and, and move in fresh troops. Yep. So that, that's another thing that you have to do very, very well. I think you left one guy here that you probably would have wished you would have moved, but you didn't have much nope. option. Didn't have a choice. So I was able to kind of run down the hill and and skewer him. But the other thing about these boards is very plain board. Yep. These are tiles that represent terrain that you put. So if you take all those off, it's a green field. And the ancients looks the same way. The field's like it's sand. yellow sand. <laughs> so it's very plain until you add the terrain, yes. which are rivers and hills and forests and you know, battlements, fortifications, etc. And as such, if you wanted to play a historically, there's a million board yep. setups you could try. Yeah. Like an infinite number of maps you could make. Yep. You could play this a thousand times and I think probably not turn out the same way because of the cards, because of... And the units being different is so cool. Yeah. There's a lot of asymmetry built into the different formations and units and types. My men are better at... Are, are, Infantry charges. Your guys were a little better at, at ranged at fire. ranged fire. The other, you know, in the other expansions, the the Spanish and the Austrian and what are the other two that we have? Uh, the Prussians and the Russians. You know, they all have different yes. benefits and abilities, and and that they're, they're subtle, mm -hmm. but they make a big difference. I think. Yeah, they do. And I, that was something that I actually really enjoyed because we've played Memoir Forty Four a few times, mm -hmm. and the sides are the same. They're generally the same. They, they're, they're just gray men 
or green men. Yes. Right? But there's no real differences yeah. in what they The Germans do. aren't better at machine gun fire than the Americans, or yeah, it's just all the same. Whereas this, the subtleties in, yeah. the, in the unit changes, whilst that did mean there was a bit more bookkeeping with, with all the play aids, right. I, I felt like the sides were different, mm-hmm. and it was, actually felt like a different army. It's, Absolutely. Again, it's not glaring, it's subtle. I'm like, you're trying to charge me, I know that, and I'm yeah. trying to pick you yep. off from long range. That made a big difference in our different various strategies. Yeah, it And I did. think that's really nice to see in the game, because yeah. I've not seen that in this any of the style. Commands and Colors games before. I, I'm really, we've played. I'm really excited to try out those other armies and just see what the differences are. Yes. I, I just think that's cool. I'm also very excited to try out CNC Ancients. Yes, because there's a lot of cool stuff. And in I those. imagine that has the same type of a thing. They Agreed. Have very, very different unit types and different mm-hmm. armies. I'm sure they have a similar thing. But what I mean by the bookkeeping is this is like the play aid for the French. Yep. And they have all these different units and, and numbers and abilities. And then there's a whole separate one. If I can find it for the British, that's another French one. It's over here. Yeah. yeah. So. You know, if I want to know what the enemy's got, I've got to look at a whole other bifold. Yeah. And so it's kind of looking through different things to make sure, oh, yeah. he can't do this, I can do this, this is your bonus, this is my bonus. You, you even had Portuguese troops yeah. that had a little different... So know. there's that was one thing that was I would not experienced in a game like this. was It was a bit more of, I had to keep checking those and be like, am yeah. I getting a bonus from this? what's the special little ability this yeah. particular guy And has. you really have to check it. I, I'm sure there were a couple times where we either didn't do something we should have done, like added an extra dice, yes. or we did, and it shouldn't have been. I, I'm sure that happened. But it's nothing but that's overwhelming. No, I just no, no, wasn't no. used to it, because yeah. I've not... Memoir 44 and it's The different. Great War doesn't... It just doesn't have that stuff, yeah. really. Um I, I like this game. I'm trying to remember in Memoir 44, do you roll dice based on the number of yep. guys left in your in your yes. hex? This game, it's not. If you have one guy, well, no, that's not true. On rifle fire, wasn't it rifle fire? It's it's you roll one dice per per. Block. Okay, you're right. Unless you move. Or move like half. You're right. You're right. So it's the same. It's the same. I can't remember. We haven't played that in a while. Anyway, sorry. Either way, strike that. <coughs> Don't worry about it. This was I enjoyed this a lot. What I'll do is yeah. I'll show you the board, and it's just a, a very briefly how it plays because there's a ton of stuff out there, and yeah. this is quite a famous system. Um, and then we'll wrap up with a few just final thoughts. So here's a, a look at the board. Uh, you're looking at kind of from the French side. I played the the British here. Um, it wasn't a crushing defeat, but it was pretty bad. So this scenario was kind of first to six um, victory banners or flags. And you get a victory flag by eliminating an enemy unit. The British were also able to get them by running guys off of the board. They were trying to retreat across this river, basically. Um, each scenario has its own individual setup. And there's a whole book here that has all of this in. It literally shows you, here's the tiles to put out, here's the units to put out, here's who goes first, and then you fight to the death kind of a thing. So we put out all of these different tiles. So there's a kind of a hill line here, some fortifications, the river, and some other bits and pieces. And you line up your troops, how it was set up, and then you use cards to move and fire. So the cards are all different types So we'll see here, this one says, Assault Right Flank. So you order a number of uh, units or leaders on the right flank equal to command, uh, equal to command, which is the number of cards that you're holding. In this scenario, your hand was four cards. So the right flank, what is the right flank? Well, it's the right side of the battlefield. In game terms though, you can kind of see here there's these two black dotted lines that go down this part of the board. Not to be confused with the folds of the board. <laughs> dotted lines. And this literally is, this is the right flank. This is the center, and this is the left flank. And so, 
I've got four cards. I play this one. I could order four units in this right section. Well, for the French, they've only got three units in this section, and they've only all got one um, strength each, which is very weak. This is the end of the battle. These guys are very close to being eliminated. Most block, most units start with kind of four blocks in them, sometimes three, sometimes five, depending on what units they are. Again, that's something that varies based on um, <clears throat> nationality. So the British light infantry had five blocks, and the British rifles, I don't have any on the board because they all died, only had three blocks. Whereas the French line, inf line infantry had four blocks, and the French heavy cavalry had four blocks, the British heavy cavalry only had three. So there's nuance in all of that, which is in this big play aid card right here that tells you you know, X amount of blocks per unit, how far they can move, and there's some attack modifiers and bits and pieces, so you want to keep this handy. But, you settle this up, these guys are weak, so this is not necessarily a good card to play. Well, the other cards that I have here, I have a bombard, which means I can fire my artillery pieces. Well, the French only has one, and he's out of range of everything, so that's a terrible card to play. And then, your other ones are a counterattack, something we might look at, or a cavalry charge. So issue an order to four or fewer cavalry uh, or horse artillery units, um, and then they can move and they can battle with extra dice if they wanted to. So that's a way you don't, you're not necessarily restricted by a particular flank or region, you, so you, you can just kind of pick four, artil four horse units. So we've got these guys here, they can move, they can move, I got my light ones over here, they can move three spots, and maybe I'll retreat this guy one, two, three spots. So I could do that for my turn. Or I could play something like this counterattack, which mirrors the exact card which the enemy just played against me. So if the enemy had played something like an attack, let's see, we have recon in force, which is attack one unit in each section, or well, I could just say, I copy your card, I do the same thing. So there's a lot of cool options with these cards and how they play and how you handle those and which ones to play at what time will enable you to move your forces in a both constructive and reasonable way. Sometimes you have a terrible hand. Sometimes you cannot, for the life of you, move the units you want to. And that's kind of what happened in this game. You can see there's almost nothing over here because I either was killed or the Frenches were very much weakened but they'd also driven me back and had moved down here so there was a lot of action over here. Almost nothing happened over here. You can see these units are all full strength. They're all way back here in the corner. We just didn't have any cards in this particular scenario to, to do anything over here. I retreated my guys back a little bit but there was no action when there could have been a ton. So that's kind of the model of your battlefield confusion and your command chain maybe not being as strong as you might like it to be. And then it just represents that kind of chaos. Sometimes the runners don't make it here or convey their orders or they were just hesitant and didn't do things so immediately. Um, that's just part of the fun of the game is can you make happen what you desperately need to happen. Um, it's rare that you'd lose a game because of terrible, terrible, terrible card draws. And if you do, who cares? The games take 40 minutes, 45 minutes, you just play again, no big deal. Um, as far as fighting's concerned, there's a, a bit more nuance to this than there is to um, something like Memoir 44. Memoir 44 you just chuck some dice based on what you've got and it's, and it's very standard. You know, infantry, you have range one or two. Um, tanks can shoot up to range, I think, three or four, and they get fewer dice at long range, and artillery do a similar thing. And this, the units attack differently depending on if they're doing melee combat when they're adjacent, or if they're doing ranged combat when they're further apart, and then it depends also on what unit type it is, and which nationality that unit is. So, British line infantry are not 
equal to French line infantry. British line infantry roll one dice for each block in the unit in ranged combat plus one. They were just better shots. They were just trained in better ranged combat. So we'll destroy the river. If these guys are attacking here, they roll four plus one dice. And I'm trying to get men because that's what I'm targeting. I'm targeting infantry, so I'm trying to roll infantry. Cavalry is a misses and a saber is a miss. So I kill two guys. Great, I did, you know, 50% casualties. If the French attack me, their ranged attacks are only one block per dice. Wow, that was insane. So they would do three losses to me. But statistically speaking, <laughs> five dice is better than four. Now, if we're adjacent and we get into combat, the reverse bonus is true. So the French in line infantry in, in uh, melee get one dice per block plus one. And the difference here is that, yes, they rolled three infantries. Wow, this is terrible. In melee, a saber is also a kill as well. So they're going to eliminate all of these units. Whereas, conversely, if I had four um, British doing melee against the four French, I would only roll four dice, and I would do three hits only. In this instance, I have a flag as well, so he has to retreat. If we were to go back here where the French eliminated everyone, my little leader is feeling pretty sad and lonely on his own. He's got to roll a dice to see if he dies or not. Basically, on a roll of a sabers for that little kind of leader injury check, he would die. If not, he's going to run away off the battlefield, basically. He was a very ungentlemanly to hound a lone officer as he was running away. That's kind of that rule. Um, cannons, they are very effective. They'll shoot, you know, three or four dice here, and then two or three dice here, and then one dice out here. As you might expect, they get weaker as they get um, further away in their range. The cavalry can't do ranged attacks. They don't have, you know, they didn't have horse-mounted riflemen. They move very fast, especially the light cavalry. They move like three spots, and they just engage in melee and just start swinging. Um, you're trying to roll what you're targeting. So if I've got, if I'm attacking some artillery, I'm trying to roll artilleries. These would kill two artillery units. That'd be very good. If I'm attacking cavalry, I'm looking for the yellows. Anytime I roll a flag, I force the unit to move back one space towards their edge of the board. A leader, and this is something that's new for me in this game, means that this unit that it's attached to can ignore the first flag. So if I shoot my cannons at these guys and I roll three dice, for example, I do two kills, Normally, they would have to retreat one space, but if I choose to, I can just ignore that and they can stay there. That's important because advancing can be slow, and if you are up close in melee and you didn't want to move, it, it, that's important for holding ground if you were desperate, or keeping yourselves rolling the maximum dice possible instead of having to like charge back up again. So that's a little bit just about kind of movement, and attacking. It's a very simple game. You play a card, you do what it says in the card, you move all your guys, you attack with all your guys with to whom you issued an order. So this guy attacked three in the center. The French move three units, one, two. These guys won't move, and these guys won't one, two. You move all your three units, and then you attack with all three of them. They'll do an attack here against him. These guys will do an attack here against him. It's really simple that way. Then it goes to my opponent's turn, and I just draw a card to replace the one in my hand that I played. And you just cycle through the deck until someone, in this, in this scenario, you had to get six of these victory banners, or until your victory conditions are met. So that's just a quick look at this. It's a very simple system. We'll kind of wrap up with a few final thoughts here. So that was a look at the board, big green field. This one actually has terrain.
Yeah. have looked through ancients and they're like Some it's a big sand. sandy plain yep. <laughs> this one actually has terrain in it and that's a big feature of it yeah. you know it's a bit more skirmish tactics with rifle units and light infantry wheeling your cavalry around to mm-hmm. outflank different bits and pieces um, and you get cool cannons <laughs> yeah yeah when you start getting into that close range with the cannons Ugh. that grape shot can I be mean, devastating you were, you were rolling three and four dice there yeah that was bad, and then your combined fire was very cool. You got a yes. You got a combined heavy cavalry. Yeah, a heavy cavalry charge along with with my foot artillery. Yeah, that was devastating. So they combine all their dice and they roll, and at, they hit at, on at like the melee heavy cavalry yeah. value. So very that, cool. That was neat. To get that to happen is not going <coughs> to happen. That's not going to happen a lot. You got to. Have a lot of things come together to kind of make that happen. Yes. Which that was cool. I'm glad we were able to see that. Um, also, we saw uh, cavalry breakthroughs. Yeah. Right? Where we would... They can, they can move and attack. And if they eliminate or... Force a retreat. Can, they can move and attack like again. Again, one time. They can't keep doing it. But that's... That's but, very powerful. That's very cavalry, yep. right? That's awesome. Cavalry are based on kind of that momentum and... I wanted to get my heavy cavalry in, but I never really drew. They just sat on the hill back there. Yeah, they were like, oh, we're resting for the next <laughs> battle. It's it's just interesting the way the cards come up. Sometimes you just got to move the guys that are... Yep, you're just rolling with, you, you oh, know, right, this is what we're doing. And, and that would have been great to have those cavalry come up behind and really support those, but it, it, didn't, it just didn't happen. So, very, very interesting. But yeah, all in all, it's a great looking game. I, I yeah. like the artwork on the stickers. The blocks look cool on the table. Very well done. There's probably in this base game, how many? Okay. 200 blocks? Good gracious. Probably more than that. It says it is 340 okay. blocks. So 340 blocks of all sizes. <coughs> there are big ones, small ones, very tall ones that are leaders. And you got to put two stickers on each one of these. Yes. It can take hours to so, do that. Yeah, I think hours. I, I stick about. I think there's about like 250 in each of the expansions. And you've done the I've done, Austrian. I've done the Austrians and the Spanish. Spaniards, and that each one takes about three hours. You know, so so put the TV on. You're gonna be <laughs> putting take, stickers on. Than that. Yeah, three or but four, hour, yeah, four I'm, hours. I've been doing about a week. And, and, and you know, you you also we're both a little neurotic. You don't want your stickers to look bad, so you want them centered well. There's many times that you kind of put it on, you're like, nope, peeling that sucker back off. And they do give you some extras, so if you really get sloppy and tear one up. Yeah, or if you lose one. Yeah. You know, they may fall off. The dice are pretty interesting, too. Those are stickers. You just... Yeah, little custom dice. They have wooden dice somewhere. I thought we saw wooden dice where you could either order them. Those are third party. Third party. But those look pretty sweet. Yeah. Wooden engraved rather than stickers. But <coughs> these are functional. Overall, very it's a great looking game, simple to learn, fun to play, and there's enough replayability here, not with just the 15 scenarios. You gotta remember you could play both sides. Mm-hmm. And to really understand the tactics and the way you should use your unit, use your, use your units, you're gonna have to play each scenario a couple of times. So you could easily get 50, 60 plays out of this before you really play everything. And well, and then and then on top of that, there's like Four army expansions. Yeah. And then there's also like an... It's not called Epic. There's an Epic expansion. Yeah. Where you can play double the amount. Yeah. And then there was like another... Like a leaders and strategy. Okay. Just crazy. That looks really cool. There's, there's, there's game so much. There's a lot out there. So if it's something that you're interested in or think you might be interested in, this is a great place to start with Napoleonics, yeah. if you've not, because it's a system you're probably familiar with, let's be honest. Yeah. Or, or if you're not, very easy to learn. Uh, not a complex game. Uh, but it's a cool way to get to grips with what a battlefield looks like, Yep. how it's going to play out, the interplay between combined arms, um, and, and good Napoleonic Well, and, and we didn't even talk about squares, you know, and infantry forming up to protect themselves from cavalry. We didn't really... There's a lot to this game. There really is. Yeah, there's some, there's some nuance. And something that didn't come up was if infantry tried to melee cavalry, mm-hmm. the, the, the cavalry can opt to just basically run away. Yeah, right, and right. And reform. Yep. They'll take, like, 
one round of attacks and some damage, but then they can just bugger off and, and come back. Because yeah. yeah. they they just out, outrun yep. them. They're mobile. So there's, so there's a lot of things like that. The little little bits and grains yeah. like that that give you like some pretty good history yeah. from what a Napoleonic battlefield would look like. Yeah. And that's always a good bonus for me. I want to learn more mm -hmm. about the history when I'm playing the game. Yeah. And I think this does at least on a battlefield scale, it does that. Well, and and this is a very GM. GMT type product, very well done, great art, great production value, good rules. It plays well. I I, I like this a lot. Well, I had a and great the game. Is what nearly ten years old? Yeah, two thousand and ten. This, this is not a new game. No, now they've just reprinted all the expansions and stuff. Yeah. They didn't reprint the base game. No, we actually went out and hunted this copy down yes. and got it off. I think BGG for what did we get? Forty bucks. Yeah, forty it? bucks. So it's a it's used available used on the marketplace. You can get it. It's available, but it's got staying power. If it's got yeah. that many expansions, they keep turning them out. This is a game that's going to serve you well in your collection for yep. a while, especially if you you know have a regular opponent to play these kind of games. Well, with. and I also think I think of you and your young son. You know, Goose is just five. He's five, yeah. So I would think in the next three four years, you could teach a game like you might want to start with Memoir Forty Four. Maybe, yeah, because it's got little tanks. Yeah, start there, build up. But I could see you guys playing this. You know, my son's too old. He, he's not going to do it anymore. <laughs> I'm going to tell um, myself that that's what we're going to do. Yeah. And I know the rest of you lie to yourselves about yeah, right, that as right. well. Oh, You're going to end up my children at some point. playing with your crotchety friend or do it solo. And in 20 years' but, time, you'll be playing it solo. Yep, on your yep, own. Like, my kids yep, hate me. Yep. That's why I entirely envision having, honestly, sure. but it's fine. Uh, I have a great time playing this. Yes. I, I, the more and more I play this, I think about that. Have you ever seen the TV show Sharp? Mm -mm. Oh, it's, a, it's an old, it's a BBC show. Mm -mm. It, mm -mm. It's like an hour and a half episode, and it's Napoleonic history. Yeah. Okay. But it's but it's like a, it's based on a series of novels by Bernard Cornwell. But it's Sean Bean, and he's oh, Richard yeah, Sharp. Oh yeah, yeah, Boromir. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like this like ragamuffin from London from, mm -hmm. from the East End off the streets and he like he saves Wellington's life and then he gets commissioned ah. but, but he's not a gentleman and, <laughs> right. he, and it's him going through his journey like gets a rifle company hmm. and it's him and, but you see all these like cool Napoleonic battles that he fights oh, wow. in and this hasn't aged well Okay. The scale is terrible. You're Got like, it. Look, this is the French Legion, and it's like <laughs> this is fifty guys in blue yeah. shirts marching. But it's it's got it's nostalgic for me. Yeah. But this feels like that. I, I okay. Know, that's something that um, it feels cool. I can hear the gunfire going off, and yeah, you know, hmm. you hear the trumpets going and the flags waving. I'm, I'm it's, sorry, it's I haven't fun. seen that. So. You'd watch. You'd watch it. And be like, what is this? Is terrible. <laughs> Ter a terrible. It reminds though. me of Tour of Duty from. The eighties. I'm, was I'm sure it's very similar. It, it was a good show. Terrible dialogue and just cor just super corny. But yeah, like, it but was it was awesome. something that I remember. <laughs> so not Napoleonic. It was anyway, Vietnam, but, yeah. <laughs> this is Command and Colors Napoleonics. This is the base yeah. game. Very fun game. Check it out if it's something you're interested in. Um, a good place to start with Napoleonics. But and we're gonna we talked about maybe tomorrow or even next week playing a couple of the expansions just yes. to talk about some of the new stuff. Yes, because they put some new. What do they call those? Like special abilities? Yeah. Or? The newer the newer armies have like special actions that they can yeah. do that are unique to them. Well, so, so we'll, we'll check, check those out. out. We'll do another video on some of those yeah. later on. Cool. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander, and I'm Grant.